Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back of his Teardown Lab. Our gear, our gear of uh, brokenness, which will hopefully be a gear of fixedness when we actually cast a new one, has been uh, curing for about an hour, and you can see the resin I applied is there, and it's sort of more or less filling up those gaps. There are there's about one tooth that I'm not quite happy with, but the rest is pretty pretty good. So what I've done, um, I've just sort of taken this knife and I've actually just gone in very gently crafted like that just crafted out a new tooth in each one and it's a very shallow tooth it's not a proper tooth it's more just of a sort of dimple you can see it's not very deep at all but it is there and the reason is when we make our cast tooth our cast gear rather um, we're going to have to go in and actually cut these and it's easier to have a reference because you can see they're quite deep, the whole fingernail would go in there but then on this one it's it's very very shallow and we'll get something not quite like this, a thin, a very thin file, in fact I might even have to make a tool to do this because we need a very specific size for this and uh, we'll be able to just run that in the groove that we've made when we've cast that. I'm going to be making my mould out of RTV silicon and I'm going to use condensation cure silicone to make a mold box and plop this inside and it's going to be basically located in the bottom of this tube so it won't waste too much material. And I'm going to drill a hole in the bottom and pop this screw in there to act as a little stand so it'll stand up on the bottom and then the idea is later once it's cured this you have a block there of it I'm going to cut the bottom of this and then plop it out and that way I can use the tube to keep the two halves of the mold together in the future so that's uh, that's going to be the strategy you've got a drill here got a little drill bitty going on and it's about right now the reason I'm not too bothered because the bottom is that pin on the, that whole sort of diameter of that so internally it's not going to have a, any issue at all Okay, that's nicely, nicely drilled out. So I'm going to hope this is going to go in without deforming it too much. He says, looking for a screwdriver. My kingdom for a Phillips right now. Philip, oh Philip. That looks quite good to me actually. Even, even with a very crude screw in, I think that's going to be enough. Don't really need much purchase in there. So I'm going to pop that on the magnet so it'll sit like that. And that always gives me the other benefit that I can pop a magnet on the other end if necessary. And I do have another magnet. So, in fact, let's just try that out, shall we? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here we go. So that is spot on. I've tried this before with different techniques, but this is definitely the best way. So you can see it's entirely sort of held rigidly by that magnet and it's centralized beautifully and look even if I shake it wobble it not doing nothing so I'm gonna to have to be a bit careful when I pour it I might pour it at a slight angle to make sure there's no air bubbles get trapped under there because we don't want any to get trapped because there could be you see in there um, so yeah I might pour it at an angle and then once it's over that point I'll just then gradually turn it finish the pour so I'm gonna mix up some silicone and we're gonna fill this up to the brim. It's just a bloody messy process this. Ah, it does get absolutely everywhere and this jar is getting rather light and blitzing through it. It's not cheap either. Still, it's worth it. It's worth it to try something and learn something new isn't it? So I'm gonna have to guesstimate how much to use and it's bloody difficult. You always end up with too much or too little but using my Spider-Man cup I'm gonna go <sighs> ho-hum with du, 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 du. I'll keep going. In fact I tell you what is a very interesting development I've um, managed to source for another project another kind of material that supposedly as good as this. And I'm just looking, that is bloody full actually. I've, I've bloody overfilled it, haven't I? If, you, if you're ever doing these projects, it's always good to have some sort of second thing to mould so that you can uh, dump any extra you've got into that sort of little mould box. And even if it doesn't fill it up, you can just keep topping it, topping it, topping it up. Um, I did that with some of the kids' toys and uh, ended up being able to make these little heads. In fact, it's in another video. 
So you actually have to do this by weight, and it's supposed to be a five to 100 ratio, which is something bloody annoying to achieve. So you got there your 32 grams. So you kind of think, right, five to 100, what does that give you? And then you have to try to do the maths. What's 5% of 30 and then you go hmm, what 5% of 300 be would be 15 so 5% of 30 is uh, what is that 1.5 or 0.5 see it's tiny amounts it's tiny amounts you won't be able to measure it so what I do is mix this up good and just by eye because you've done it before you're looking at that color yeah it's got a pigment in it it's designed to have the pigment to help you actually measure but just be careful because you always seem to waste a bit in the bottles just be careful just pour a bit then turn it. See it tries to drip down the edge of the bottle every time it does that. And then you mix it up. And don't put your spatula on your board. And if it looks that kind of grey then it will work out. Because every time I've failed at this is when I've tried to actually measure the bloody weight of this stuff. Because it just seems to be too many variables really to set it off and go wrong. Ah, oh, that's a good colour. In fact, that that's looking quite good, actually. I mean, that's that's close. I think that's pretty bloody close. In fact, let's get the weighing scales out of the way. It's a fat lot of good they did. I think this sort of weight-by-weight weight measurements are great if you've got some sort of drug dealer nanogram <laughs> scale. That's maybe what I need to invest in. So the effect, though, you want to get this right a bit because too little, it won't cure and too much it might cure too quickly so it's it's pretty um, safe stuff condensation cure to be fair if you're gonna do it you want to make sure you've got more too much than too little because if it doesn't cure although you can kinda rescue it you can't and also whatever object you've got in there might not appreciate being in there for sort of 24 hours before you've even figured it out because remember it takes a day to cure normally anyway in normal room temperature and humidity so if you've got a very sensitive item sitting in here it's going to be balked because by the time you've got to the next day it's sort of started to unravel or swell or warp or, or change you know some sort of physical parameter you're going to be stuffed so uh, yeah, sorry, I, I just sort of resume my conversation. I think I didn't quite finish it about my exciting development. Yeah, it's a material that's a vinyl um, material that you heat. I can't remember what it's called, but we'll, uh, we'll remember what it's called when I do the video on it. And it, um, it has a lot of the properties of silicone, um, but the fact that you heat it so you can use it quickly, it sets super quick because it just has to cool down. I mean, I don't know how long it takes to cool down, but it's gonna be qu quicker than a day. And um, once you're done, if you've screwed up, you can just cut it all up and reuse it. So it gives you the opportunity to sort of recover if you've um, screwed up. And uh, that's going to be great because the problem with this, it just it's quite a long um, cycle time if you're doing these things. Let's do the pour. So you can wait for the air bubbles to sort of try to come to the top. They're going to be very slow. So I'm going to hold this at an angle. And my super duper magnets are doing their job of keeping that just where I want. So let's hope they continue to do so. I'm just trying to get a really fine-ish stream. There we go. It's got a super razor thin fine stream that I'm pouring in there. And I'm trying to get it to go right down to the bottom. I want it to just flow down there. Flow down there. And indeed it is. It's flowing. I can see it flowing. And I always think it's ironic, really, because you're pouring it in in this fine, fine stream. But it does seem to be jumbling and bundling itself up when it hits the sort of edge of your container, so or wherever it's headed. So you kind of think, is it including air, though, when it gets to that point? I suspect it's including a bit of air. But for this purpose, I think it's going to be OK. And I'm just going to t I'm tilting it. You might notice I am tilting it at an angle here. I want to make sure as it approaches that cheeky, cheeky bit it makes sure that the air doesn't get caught underneath that gear because if it gets caught underneath the gear and I'm going to try to show you very tricky though here no I'll uh, I'll just have to you'll have to trust me I'll show you afterwards um, if you get air bubbles on that gear included in that you're it's going to be a nightmare when you've uh, demold this you'll see that there but I suppose, um, what's the effect of an air bubble? An air bubble will mean when you resin it, you're going to have too much material. So at least you could always sort of 
file that off in the final um, final version. Right, so we're getting near the uh, sort of limit of the amount of resin I've mixed. Does that make sense? I'm starting to run out, is what I'm trying to say, and uh, I'm not quite covered the shape. So I'm kind of hoping we're going to have enough to sort of cover it. I think we are just about. You can probably see it now. Hooray! Yeah, that's okay. You can see that. Now what will happen when this is all set? Oh, we've got plenty. When this is all set, we're going to actually have, if you think about it, a bit of a filling spout where the screw and the magnet is. So the, the magnet and the screw will form our little funnel for filling when we take this out of the mould. And we're going to be, it'll be filling from the fat end at the bottom up to, sorry, it'll be filling, let me think. No, it'll be filling from the thin end up to the fat end, which that'll be fine. Upside down, basically. Look at that. Our tube. We had, see how, how I, I sort of thought I was going to run out, but I end up with way, uh, way more than necessary. That's, that's how it always works out, but it's going to be fine. Now I've got I've got plenty of these tubes, so even if I screw one tube up, having to cut it up to get it out, I've got plenty to sort of slide that mould back in, so the tube will keep all the sides together. And that, my friends, is how you make a pour for a gear. And you know, I know you probably can't see it, but I am still pouring a very fine. I know my hands in front of the camera, but a very fine line. It's it's hard to describe. You know, like when you. Um, you eat a pizza and you've got cheese and it's got that sort of string that you can't get rid of and it's sort of burning your mouth. That's that's kind of what this looks like. All right, I think we've we've got enough. We've got enough. So just to show you, it's a, a tube filled with the resin and it's, I say, I'm going to put it on here because it's got that magnet. I don't want it to tip. And it relies on a little bit of humidity and a little bit of heat. So hopefully we'll come back tomorrow and that will be adequately set for us to extract our gear and uh, start to file down the gear and then have a go at fitting it and that's that's going to be critical if we can um, if that new gear will have enough strength and I'll just show you which one I'm going to be using tomorrow I'm going for, to use a different product than what I usually use I'm using tomorrow this P6 toughened polyurethane casting resin and the reason it's toughened is that it has more material. So you can see here in the bottle, there's a clear amount there, and then there's this chunk of white at the at the uh, bottom. That's the additional material. And I think it could be glass fiber. I'm pretty sure it is. And that's why you've got to really mix these resins up before you use them, and why they turn quite milky, because that's what they've got in there to give it strength. And if you use other varieties, like the non, uh, I shall show you. <laughs> Here we go. This is a, a non-toughened one, and you can see, although so let's say this is the nominal height, it's half full, you've only got tiny amounts. It's almost it's, it's a, the other one is, is way thicker ratio of this filler material. And uh, you can use all sorts of stuff apparently. You can have it, you know, chopped up fiberglass, chopped up carbon fiber, all sorts. Metal filing, some have metal in them to give if you especially for gears, if you want them to give give have a bit more sort of bite on them so they don't wear as much, you, you put in the metal filings on the teeth. So let's uh, leave this to sort of have a little rest and we'll come back to it and hopefully be able to pop it out.